right, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Oh Hell No podcast. Today, I have Laura Farrell. She is an energy practitioner, and I'm very excited to have her because I love conversations about energy. So welcome, Laura. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yes, and she is in Hawaii, so you know I am so jelly right now. (laughs) (laughs) You have an open invitation. Come visit when we can. (laughs) I will be taking you up on that. (laughs) I've never been, so yeah. Oh, love it. Okay. All right. So we, we're going to talk about, you know, what you do, um, how you do it, how you got into it. So the first question I want to ask you is what do you remember noticing about yourself as a child that was special or different? Wow. Where do I start? Well, the one thing that comes to mind when you ask that question is I would see or feel things I would see apparitions or I knew God Mm -hmm. and I would be directed in certain ways or I'd see things about people and I would comment on it. And children, you know, kids are just so open. And I thought everybody could do this. I thought everybody saw the things that I saw or got to experience or heard people like I could, it's hard. It's kind of hard to explain. It's just like a knowing, like I knew things about people. And I would say things to them and um, until it was put on me by the adults around me that said, oh, no, we don't we don't talk about that. (laughs) Don't do that. (laughs) Right. Are you sure you saw that? And so then I started being quiet. But I was quite young when that happened. I remember that's like one of my first memories was that. Wow. So at a young age, you were picking up on energies and just tuning in very deep with people. And- Absolutely. I used to go to um, to church with my grandparents, too, mm-hmm. and I could see the auras of people. Like, I would see the colors, and I would mention the colors. So, wow. And I love color. Like, color is just fantastic. It's all around us, and I love it. But I remember seeing that as a kid and I just thought everybody could because it was magical to see that in people. And, and it was just so fun. And my favorite, my, um, my grandfather was Catholic and my mom never really took us. She grew up in like Catholic school and stuff like that. And, Mm -hmm. but going with my grandfather, it was, it was super fun. And my favorite part, and I don't know, are you familiar with the Catholic church or anything like that? Um, yeah, uh, I am. (laughs) <laughs> well, there's this one part where they say, peace be with you. Uh-huh. And you get to go to everybody and like you're shaking. That was my favorite part. <laughs> my favorite part of the whole thing is the kids. I loved all the people and all the colors. And I was like, peace be with you. And it was so fun. So, yeah, Gosh, that well, was what, one of it. What color is my aura? Can you see it? Do you see mine? Well, we kind of have. Right now it's kind of blurry because you have that background <laughs> thing going on. So, <laughs> It's kind of going in and out and cutting it out, so. Right, it is. It's like my mic is disappeared, like, forget it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So what exactly does an energy, energy practitioner do, and how do you help people? Well, I help people to transform. If you're in the middle of a transition in your life, and you're needing help getting from where you're at currently, if you're stuck in a certain energy or you're carrying around, like I can see in your energetic body where there's blockages for you, I help you to remove that. Where there's been pain or trauma that you've been carrying around that maybe you're not even aware of, that we can go through and move through that as well on a cellular level, but to help you ascend from where you're at to where you'd like to be. So I assist with that. It's really on... um, a personal level, because everybody's at different stages, right? So depending on what one person's going through to another, somebody could be going through grief and loss of a loved one. Another person, you know, wants to achieve more success in their career, or somebody else wants a little more love in their life, or, and that there's different ways we go about achieving that for the person. So it's really the outcome that you want. Hmm. Okay. So how do you see the world and how does that help you in your work? I see the world as, even though right now there's 
if you look at it from the outside perspective Mm -hmm. of what you see right now, if you turn on the news or whatever, you see the pain and suffering that everybody's going through. I feel into it and see it as a beautiful time for change, a time for growth for all of us and a time to get back to loving each other and helping each other, our planet, as well as the human race, right? All of us together and ascending to that higher level for the greatest good. Okay. And looking at the world with that perspective, how would you say that helps you with your day-to-day work? Well, with my day-to-day work, and I've always said this regardless of working or not working, and it could just be meeting somebody on the street or being in the grocery store, I always, always want to the interaction with somebody to never take away or detract from a person, to always leave you the same or better, right? To share that energy and love the same or better. And to understand that some people are going through the suffering that they're going through or whatever's happening in their in their journey and to love everyone at their level of consciousness that they're at in this moment. Okay. So um, how do you protect and preserve your energy so that you're able to do your work? Oh, my goodness. That's a good one. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I always. It's interesting that you asked me this because there's part of me that takes me, Laura, and my you know, all my stuff, because I got stuff too, just like everybody else, right? Mm-hmm. And I'll kind of, I'll take me and put me aside. Like if you package it up or you got your bag that you take with you before you head out the door, I'll just put it aside and I'll pick me up later. And whatever needs to be channeled through for the person I'm working with for their greatest and highest good, that's what's given. So, and for myself, I, I do, um, there's little techniques that I do to clear out my energy and to prepare my energy too. I do this one and it's good for, if you wanna try to a little tip and technique just to protect yourself, but so we can all, because everyone's a filter for everybody else's energy. We all have capability to do this for each other at different levels, right? But I like to put what's called a protective bubble around myself. And you know, when you blow a bubble, if you've taken bubbles and you blow it, and it's that pretty iridescent color that you can see of the soap kind of swirling around. Yep. I put that on and I like to think the thinner the bubble is, you know, usually when a bubble's really thin, it's super fragile. For mm-hmm. me, I picture it being stronger, but where the energy is able to go and what's mine is mine and what's yours is yours and only for the greatest and highest good. So I don't take on that myself, but let myself be a filter for whatever you should need. Okay. So what do, what would you say is the most difficult part of what you do? Sometimes um, it's difficult because especially when working so closely with, with clients and with their energy and being that filter, like I talked about mm-hmm. is wondering, okay, you know, I have this pain in my shoulder that I'm working through to make sure that it's not mine and talking, you know, into it and just letting it transmute whatever needs to happen. Um, The other thing that can be challenging is when you see or feel things for people and they aren't ready to look at it themselves yet. Mm. Wow. And that's something that can be challenging and sometimes you just want to go, come on, just let it go. You're all good. <laughs> you know? If you would just drop this right now, your life would be cherry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not ready. And you just, like I said, you just love people through that. Just to keep sending that unconditional love regardless. And so that, that can be challenging, especially when you're like, I see this or I feel this and you're just, you're just denying it, but okay. <laughs> Okay. So, um, all right. You have on your website that, um, you've been beyond the veil of this existence and back. 
What exactly does that mean? That means that I literally died and got to cross over and came back. I had a near death experience. I know I've heard some people say they've had near death experiences, but it was more like they didn't actually die and come back. I um, had woken up and had a bilateral. I woke up and I ended up experiencing a bilateral pulmonary embolism, which is um, a blood clot that went to both of my lungs and I stopped, I stopped breathing. And it was, it was terrifying and, and painful. And, but I remember the whole time I was like, okay, God, you got me. You got this. I'm like, this sucks right now, but thank you because nothing has been ever this painful or scary, but I know whatever you're doing to me right now, this is going to be over. And as soon as it is, I know something better lies on the other side. So I just remember thinking, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't know what's going to happen, but thank you. And I was, I could literally was taken out of my body and and I died and then came back. And it was, it was fantastic. Wow. (laughs) So you, do you remember the experience of when you were like out of your body, you can remember that? Oh, absolutely. I was even, I had been talking to my daughter because I'm a single mom. So it was just my daughter and I that were at home and I was talking to her and later she told me, she's like, mom, you weren't saying anything. And I was trying to talk to her, but I remember I could see everything around me. Mm -hmm. I could, I knew, I knew when the paramedics were coming, I knew when they, they showed up at the house, but I also was taken away. I can remember everything that happened and how I went and crossed over and what I got to experience there was, was pure love and bliss. And that doesn't begin to touch what it is. I mean, I, I didn't want to come back and that was hard to say at first, you know, because especially for my daughter, nobody wants to hear that, you know, and that kind of scared her, but yeah, it was the connection that you feel to everything and the love that you can feel in everyone and everything everywhere, the planet, the blades of grass, the, the insects, the, the, the energy that is felt in, in, you know, a book, uh, it, it, even the things that we think are tangible, solid objects, everything is fully, fully connected. We are so part of each other. It's absolutely incredible. And there's no fear. I literally became everything and nothing simultaneously. And there's no time. Nobody's gone. If you have a loved one that's passed, know that they're never gone. They're just, they've just changed this earth suit. Their energy is always here and always with you. So did you see anybody you knew? It was, um, that might be a strange question. I mean, well, maybe not a strange question. <laughs> right. That's what people usually in my experience, that's what people think for me. It was more like feeling that presence and knowing that they're there for me. Everything was just this, sheer white and I felt tremendous love but I also knew as soon as I thought something or Mm -hmm. of someone I was with them Mm. like instantaneously and it could be at any time at any time we're capable of going and that whole experience of being at one and being able to carry that through was just phenomenal That's amazing. I mean, only certain people get to experience that. You hear people talk about it and people say, oh, they're crazy. Like, I don't believe that. But I believe that. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I do. I believe it. So um, do you ever have to convince anyone that what you do is a real thing? And if you do, what do you tell them or show them so that they understand that you're this reading of energy is very real. I I don't need to convince you. Okay. I don't need to convince anybody. I mean, I am secure in who I am and my gifts. Mm-hmm. And besides that, it's like when you try and argue with somebody else's perception, you look crazy. 
if they're already saying you're crazy you're crazy and you're like no i'm not no i'm not um look you're acting crazy right now right you know, so it's either and you're only going to understand at your level of consciousness in this in this moment so it, it, not all energy is going to be cohesive in that time and i don't need to be everybody's flavor right that's okay you know absolutely I'm good with that <laughs> i'm absolutely good with that <laughs> yeah so if you're ever out and people are like talking about what you do, well, oh, I do this for a living. Oh, what do you do? And, you're, and I hate that question, by the way, when I'm out <laughs> and someone is, that's like the first thing that they say to break ice. Like, no, get out of my face. I hate it. <laughs> but, you know, why? sometimes you're, and why? why do I hate it? Yeah, because why do you hate it? what does that matter? Yeah. You know, like, what does it matter what I do? Like I could see if we were having a conversation and I said, oh my God, I had such a stressful day at work today and I'm just like ready to quit. And somebody would say, oh my God, well, what do you do? You know, but if you're yeah. just meeting someone for the first time and the first thing that they ask you is what do you do for a living? To me, that's just, I don't want to talk do you, to you anymore. Do you feel like they're judging? Like it's an instant judgment when they yeah, ask. I feel like them. they're trying to either they have motives, right? They, yeah. They're trying to meet people who can, you know, maybe help them or elevate them or whatever it is. Like, they're not genuinely interested in you. They're interested in maybe what you can do for them or how you can, you know. But not you as a person. Right. But not yeah. me as a person. And I don't like that. And I don't want to waste my time talking to anyone like that. I think there's <laughs> so many other things that we could talk about you know, at a dinner party or at an event that's outside of work and outside of all of those, you know, things that Superficial we Superficial conversations. Huh? Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, I feel like we, we could talk about so many other things that are more interesting, but that's just me. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's because <laughs> I'm not like a doctor or something, you know, maybe people who are, and I don't even know. I think if you, if you do something and you do it because you truly love it and not really so much for bragging rights, because there are a lot of people that will go to school and, and get, you know, degrees and, and do things just to be able to say, oh, I'm a doctor or, oh, I have a PhD or, oh, you know, but it's not really genuinely like, oh, my God, I really love, you know, saving people's lives or doing this or whatever, you know? Absolutely. Right. So. I think if you're that type of person who the first thing out of your mouth is, oh, I'm a doctor or, oh, I'm a dentist or, or you know, like <laughs> you're already all screwed up. I don't know. Yeah, but do you get along with your mom? <laughs> you know? Yeah. But are you a good person? Right. You know? Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, I feel like people like that, they've got it all wrong. So I don't know. But that's just my opinion. Yes. <laughs> But yeah, so if you're out and you're meeting someone and, and you say, oh, I do this and, and they're like, oh, my God, OK, well, you know, then that's your cue to be like, I'm out of here. Like you're, you're not even interested in explaining to that person like what it is you do or do you feel like or does it depend on the energy? Maybe if the energy if it's curious energy. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, know. because some people are just genuinely curious yeah. or they don't understand or they're just getting into energy. But we all have this capability. Right. And it's how much, how much do you want to tap into it? How much do you want to explore it? I mean, even if you walk into, like you said, walk into the room and you're feeling their energy. Yeah. You can see if you want to engage in that or not, yeah. or, or what, if you want to have that conversation with somebody or not. Right. And, and, and go from there. You remind me of, um, one time I had, uh, applied for this job and I had this, this interview with the head of of the HR department. Right. Mm -hmm. And she asked, I know this, this kind of goes with what you're saying, but it kind of doesn't, but it, it, I was just reminded of this and she, she, I'm having this interview with this head of HR, you know, this, this, this real big corporation. And she asks, what is my greatest strength? Right. And you know, you're supposed to, it's kind of like that. What do you do? And right. you're supposed to talk really great and give a good answer. Mm -hmm. And nothing came to mind, but love. Like I literally, you could have asked me my name and I, I, I wouldn't even have known it. And so I looked at her and I said, love. Wow. And she's all, 
okay. <laughs> we don't need any of that hair. Yeah. But it goes along with that. You see where people's mindset is, right? Yeah. And I think if anything right now, it should be love. Yeah. We should love everyone right where they're at, whether we agree with who they are or not, whether we agree with what they're doing or not. That's their journey. It's not a reflection of you and your journey. I don't care if that person is a doctor, a dentist, and, you know, I like to fold towels. I don't know. You know, not that folding towels is beneath anything. We are all equal. Yep. Everything. It doesn't matter what you do. It takes all of us. It's like when my son was little and do you have kids? Mm -hmm. Yep, I do. Okay. So have you ever done the chore chart at home? Uh, yes. Okay. You know how, so my son, his big motivation when he was young was like his allowance, right? Woo. What am I going to get my allowance? And so he would have his chores and, and he would get the stars and he would get so much of an allowance. There was even extra, right? Like if you did some extra chores, you could get a little bit extra for the week. Okay. That lasted a week. If that, mm -hmm. and the next week, my son was like, you know, what, mom, I, I don't, I don't want to do that chore chart anymore. And I looked at him and I go, really? That's fantastic. And he was confused. He said, why? Like, he just looked at me confused. I go, well, I mean, it's great. If you don't want to do it, you still have to do your chores because it takes everybody in the household, you know, not just me. It takes everybody in the house to do everything. I just don't have to pay you now. You know? <laughs> right. And that's like, that's like life, right? We need the lawyers, the dentists, the sanitation workers, the, the whatever. We need all of us combined to yeah. do what we do right and do what you love you may have to be a server but you really love you know stand-up comedy and so to be the server for a while and do stand-up comedy on the side till one takes over yeah. do whatever brings you joy what you would really enjoy at the core of you and if we would all live from that space we automatically make everyone else better but yeah. appreciating everyone for where they're at. Those people, like you said, that are just asking, what do you do? And they just like that title. They might be really sad inside. I think so. That if that's all you need. Right. You know, who knows what their story is. But anyway. Yeah, I'll never know because that's always my um, cue to exit stage left. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, have you ever met someone with very, I, don't, I guess I'll say bad, but maybe you could correct me with very bad energy that wanted your help and you were able to actually help them. That I was able to, or yeah, I was like you met this person and their energy was funky and just not good. And they wanted your help. Um, and you said, okay, I'm going to work with this person even though this energy is very heavy and you were able to help them clean that energy up. Have you ever had a situation like that? Oh yeah, absolutely. But I have to decide if it's going to be beneficial for us to do that. Cause mm -hmm. like I've said at your level of consciousness, some people are ready or, or, or knowledgeable or have gone through some work already. And some people haven't, that they're newly into it. And if I recognize that I can or it will be beneficial for us to work together, I will, or to give, you know, little, little um, techniques that they can be do or to um, recommend someone else that they're better suited for. Because we're not all suited for, like I said, we are not all the same flavor, right? We don't always like the same things. And that maybe their energy would be better and more cohesive with someone else. Mm -hmm. I definitely would recommend that. Yeah. But yeah, if that happens or people really, they want to know, but they're also resistant. Mm. Because you've got to get to that space where you really are ready to receive and you may me, you really desire something for your life and desire that change, but you, it's one thing to say it. It's another thing to actually, okay, I'm ready to move it and get in there. Right. 
Yeah. Like I could say all day long that I'd like, you know, a tight butt, but unless I'm ready to do some squats, it's not going to happen. You know, if I sit on the couch and eat ice cream all day, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just, they have to be willing to do the work because sometimes this can be frightening to look at yourself or to forgive yourself. Yeah. Sometimes it's easier to do that for others than it is for yourself. You know, I think it's always hard for people to look at themselves and do the work to work on themselves. And that's why you have a lot of people that would rather walk around and just be miserable and carry that negative energy because it takes a lot of work to really say, I'm hurting. These are the reasons why. How can I fix this? You know, absolutely. Absolutely. And to open yourself up to be vulnerable. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah. That so, can be frightening. Yeah, I, I agree. And um, I'm very big on energy. Um, I go off of energy. And the funny thing is, even though I'm big on energy, like sometimes my gut will tell me things. And I'll be like, oh, no, maybe I'm just overreacting. Maybe I'm being too judgy. Maybe I'm like talking myself out of what my gut is telling me. Right. right. It's exactly. so insane. And it's like now I'm like, nope, follow your gut on everything. Like even the simplest thing, like the other day I was mailing a package to my in-laws and my gut told me to stop at home and go repack that bag because it's not packed properly. So I was like, oh boy, I really don't want to, but <laughs> <laughs> so I came home and right when I came home, the mail lady was here and she dropped off these two huge boxes in front of my door and they were for foam containers. And I was like, I didn't order no damn foam containers. <laughs> so I run over to the boxes and I look at the name and it's like an address that's not even nowhere in this neighborhood. And I'm like, no, these aren't my packages. <laughs> Thank God. She was like right there so she could take them back because if not, what would I have done with those packages? Like right. two huge boxes. I'm like, see? Even though that's a small thing, if I didn't listen to myself telling me to go home, I would have exactly. ended up in a situation where now I have to f find the post lady and, you know, send these boxes back or whatever. Right. And isn't that awesome that you did listen to that? Yes. I have. And yeah. I've, I've, I've ignored my gut on a lot of things and I've gotten screwed. So I'm like, I don't care. I'm listening to my gut. Even if it tells me something that I'm like, you sure? <laughs> can do it. That's good. Another thing is when when you're recognizing that in yourself. I mean, you should really honor yourself for that and for listening. But you can also ask. You know, when you get that little self talk or that little bit of doubt, mm -hmm. ask yourself, okay, is this mine or am I picking up on somebody else? Because oh. you could be picking up on somebody else that's you know in the coffee shop next door to the post office. Right. You could be picking up on somebody else that's in, you know, around the same building or processing that feeling because they're feeling it so strongly mm -hmm. that you're able to pick up on that. And you're like, I was feeling fine a minute ago, but I don't know why I'm feeling crunchy right now, you know? Yeah. So that's really good. But see, isn't that magical? Isn't yeah, that so it. magical? And the fact that you recognized it, now you can start playing with it. Yeah, I feel like I'm really intuitive, but um, I I try to um, downplay it because I can't believe that I'm that intuitive. Like I'm like, no, this can't be real. This is why not do you? Why not? I don't know. I don't know why I'm like that with myself. Like I feel like I have the like I feel like I'm a special person. And my, I can pick up on energies. I can read people. I feel like that's a gift that I have, but I don't want to accept it because I feel like, well, maybe it's just made up in my head or maybe I'm just being too, you know, what, what's the, what's the best that could happen if you accept it? Yeah. What's the best that could happen? Mm -hmm. Look, it got you out of out of having to do all that with your foam packages right? You know, and run it all around. I would be like, thank you. I didn't have to mail that. I mean, look at all those great things. So start to think about it. What's the best that could happen? Or just think about something for your day, set that intention and, and, and let it go. 
Yeah. And see the magic and miracles that happen when you do that. It's fantastic. Right. I think I'm an overthinker. I need to just like have a seat. I'm a Scorpio Sag. I'm on the cusp of those two <laughs> horoscopes. So I feel like I'm a little tense and I overthink stuff sometimes. And, you know, I just need to chill a little bit, you know. There, therein lies the, the meditation. Yeah. The yeah. relaxation. Absolutely. <laughs> So what contributes to good energy being good or bad? What is that quote? There is no good or bad, but thinking makes it so. Mm. I forget who says that, but I remember hearing that before. There is no good or bad, but thinking makes it so. Like one person may think, you know, the sunshine is amazing and I love the heat and stuff like that. And another person is all, ew, I love it when it's rainy and snowy outside. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it, it just doesn't. I think it's whatever you choose it to be is what it is. Yeah. Whatever you decide. Okay. How can someone's bad energy affect your life? My personal life? No, just people in general. Like, I feel like people have to be conscious of um, energy. I had this lady on my podcast once, and she said that um, her husband was incarcerated for a crime. Um, I, I don't know if, I think she said that maybe he didn't commit the crime. There's something going on. It's a, it's an open case. So she didn't want to delve into it. And I didn't want to go there either, but she touched on it and said that, you know, he was incarcerated for something and, you know, she feels that he ended up in that situation because he had sloppy energy. And I loved that statement because I do feel that sometimes we can bring things into our lives or situations upon ourselves by having sloppy energy or not paying attention to who we keep company with, who we invite into our lives and things like that. And I think it's very important for people to understand that energy is real. So I wanted to, from for you, from your perspective, to tell us how can someone's negative energy affect someone else's life it's a choice it's a choice if you allow that to like if I allowed somebody's energy to affect my life mm -hmm. it's a choice um whether you choose to make it a belief whether you choose to take that on as yourself the more you talk into it and give it a story and then it starts affecting you or somebody, you know, you're driving, somebody cuts you off and, and the next day you're still irritated about it. Well, you're allowing that to happen to you. You're creating that to be more. I think when we take responsibility for ourselves and what we choose, then I used to think responsibility was a bad thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, when you're a kid, I don't want to have to do that. I don't want to have. But then, no, it's fantastic. The more I grew to know this, the better things became. Because you're responsible for you. If you choose to allow that person to do that or allow that energy to be like that, yes, it's going to affect you. I like to do, okay, this is, this is kind of silly. But if you notice that you're finding yourself in that sloppy energy, like you said, or in that frame of mind, and you can ride it like a negative horse or it starts growing like this big, icky, you know, black smog cloud, right? Like one thing leads to another, like, how could they do that? How could they talk to me like that? How do they, you know, why do they, who do they think they are? You know, all those questions like that. It goes along with questions you ask yourself. But if you find yourself starting to get in that snowball effect like that, Think of something completely opposite to break it up. Don't expect just to jump. I like to do fuzzy bunny. Okay. Let's think about it. <laughs> picture, what did you picture? Cute little fuzzy bunny, right? It has nothing to do with the person who cut you off or whatever was angry or whatever they, you know, weren't focused on or they're just allowing life to push them around or you're making it grow, grow, grow to become really huge. But if you think about a fuzzy bunny, it totally stops, right? 
Yeah. And now you're focused on something completely different instead of, ooh, I'm thinking bad right now. Now I need to think of something better, and but it's hard. And then you start wrestling with it, right, with that energy. Just switch. Think of something totally different that brings you joy. You know, it could be lasagna. I mean, who knows? Right. But if you can, if, if you can do something, that's a quick tip and trick. If you can do something in that moment to break that, that energy, break that negativity that you're going through, then that's a good starting place to go from, from there. Mm -hmm. Right. Or even experiencing that within your body. Another thing you can do is if you're witnessing something or, or somebody's doing that and they could be in the same bed as you and they're just, you know, and their energy is just horrendous right now. And you can say something to yourself like, wow, glad that doesn't apply to me. Glad that doesn't apply to me. And then that sends it back to them, you know, love you, but glad that doesn't apply to me. And then you're not going to take it on. Yeah. Okay. Um, if someone wanted to get into this line of work, what three skills would they need to have to be successful at it? And meaning your line of work, energy practitioner. Well, first of all, you really should like people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If, if, you, if you don't like people and you don't like to, to feel or process things, then I would say don't do it. Mm -hmm. But those are really good skills to have and to want the betterment. I mean, for me, it's the betterment and love of humanity and to help us all to get better and to be confident within yourself and secure in, in what you do is good as well. And to want to grow as a person and really work on your skills. Like you said about being intuitive. We all have this capability, but it's whether you choose to use it or not. And now you recognizing, even addressing that in yourself is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's all, it comes down to choice. That's with anything in life, right? Yep. You get, you get to choose. Choose if you want to. A skill that you can take, being a good listener, listening to you on the inside, as well as what the person is saying and not saying to you. Okay. So, um, if, uh, what would, what do you think the key to success is for people? I think that's a personal question. Mm. I can't tell you what, what success is for you. You know, success could be that I pet the dog when I come home and I've had a great day. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or to some people it's monetary to other people. And, and that, that's not for me to determine for others. Yeah. But I revel in your success. Like this is one thing I love about what I do is when you say, okay, I really want to get to this point or achieve this. I celebrate you. I celebrate for your soul. Like it may not be my thing to go and I don't know, do a drag race or something like that. Like I could be like, that is the farthest thing I want to do, or I don't like it. But the fact that you went and you did it, that brings me joy because you were able to get past your fear, past your fear of whatever that may be in stepping out and you went for it and look at you had it. So I love celebrating that with others. I'm like the biggest champion of that. That brings me so much joy to watch you have the success that you've chosen for yourself. What does success look like for you? Oh man, it's every day. <laughs> every day, like to do that, to help others, I love it. I love it. I love... Um, watching people accomplish their dreams or just go for it regardless of their fear. That is awesome. There was this one time, um, it was after my near death experience. And I had always said one of the things that I thought was, um, the scariest profession. I think for me, the scariest thing would be being a stand up comedian. Mm. Cause I mean, basically you are standing on a stage by yourself telling everybody to judge me. I am here, judge me. 
right? That's basically what you're doing. And and comedy is so subjective, right? There's everybody likes different forms of comedy. So one of the things, because I was after my near death experience, I was out of work for like a week and I was at home recovering for like four months. I, I mean, I was in the hospital for a week and at home recovering for four months. So I was out of work for like four or five months. But one of the things I did afterwards was I took a stand up comedy course because I thought I'm going to face my fears. I already died. What else can you do to me? You know what I mean? Let's let's go for it. And I was able to conquer my fear with that. I had a couple showcases in California at, in La Jolla at the comedy store and did a couple of stand up comedy acts. And I was like, wow, it was it was really amazing. And so now success is doing that. Anything that I've been like, you know, I don't know about that, but let's let's see what happens. What's the <laughs> best that could happen with it? Let's let's go for it because we all have those fears and we get scared about something. Right. So being able to move on beyond that, recognizing that in this moment, it may be painful. It may be scary. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen next, but I know that this is just temporary and awesome bliss and love and happiness is on the other side of it. Nice. I love it. So does burning sage really help with energy in your personal space? Oh, absolutely. Okay. But you ahead. can, you can do, do you burn a lot of sage? My friend? <laughs> no, I don't. I have some in here, but I have, I've never burned it, but I always hear people say, you know, Oh, burn some sage, you know, whatever. <laughs> so I just wanted to, to, you know, hear your opinion. It does. It cleanses out the area, but you can use other things as well. So set your intention on that. And it definitely will clear out and do different energies for you. I like different incenses myself. Um, essential oils are good too, as well. So yeah, definitely try your sage girl, burn it. <laughs> <laughs> so so I was the house. <laughs> right. So I was going to ask you if you feel like you're doing purpose-driven work, but absolutely you are. <laughs> <laughs> you're definitely living in your purpose and loving it. It's when we're in flow, like we, we talked about. It's it's being that and and loving yourself enough to give yourself permission to do it. Yeah. Give yourself that permission to try it regardless. Yeah. And see what happens just 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 see what happens if it works out great if it doesn't great you're still fabulous you know <laughs> true <laughs> all right so i always ask my guests to share an oh hell no moment um I want you to share an oh hell no moment that you've experienced. Um, and an oh hell no moment is a moment of shock or disbelief. It could be a positive moment. It could be a negative moment. But I want you to share a moment that has taught you something or changed your perspective on something in life. Just one? Just and which, one. <laughs> and which day? I mean. I know. We have these moments all the time. But all some the are time, more. Yeah. Some are more profound than others that really stick with us. Um, and I know you died. So that's a really big oh hell no moment. But <laughs> <laughs> there's maybe really the not one that can top that. <laughs> no, there's so. not. But maybe there's another one where you kind of it kind of changed something for you or taught you something where you were like, wow, I never looked at things like that before this experience. So. Do you know that's that is a challenge in of itself because I see the lessons that we have daily. Mm -hmm. I see the the things that and why we purposefully this happens within our lives, where we run into people and that little exchange is a growth. It's almost like a video game. Did you ever play video games? Yeah. And you, you walk and there'll be a character and they give you a little bit of information and then you got to go and find something else or something. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing in our everyday lives. Yeah. We meet people, we have this exchange and we get to learn more from that exchange. If it's not, if it doesn't resonate at that moment, it may happen later or plant that seed. And it's something you can go back to and go, oh, yeah. Because mm -hmm. I've always said, you know, 
if I don't know, I know somebody else that knows that can help you, right? Mm -hmm. Or if, if maybe you've been through something that I haven't, but I know I can learn from you no matter what your age, because you can learn from a child to somebody who's older than you. It's all our experiences that we have together. So for me, that's tough to answer that question because I could sit here and talk for another hour about stuff that just happened to me last week. Well, you know what I mean? Just share one <laughs> moment, Laura. You have to share one. You cannot be on the Oh Hell No podcast and not share an Oh Hell No moment. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, I will. This one is a tough one. And it just happened. This is very personal. And it just happened last week. Okay. And it was concerning my daughter. Mm -hmm. And you know, with the tension that's around everything right now yeah, in our society and um, especially here on the island too, there's a, a lot of, of locals that, because we look like we do, mm -hmm. you know, um, can be angry with us because how their island was taken over oh, and, wow. under, and understandably so. Yeah. And so they see somebody that looks like me. And we're automatically judged and, and that's fine, you know, but we had gone to the beach and I was waiting in the car and my daughter went to go use the restroom at the public restroom that's there, but it was locked and she came back and she's sopping wet on the side of her and mm -hmm. she was visibly shaken and nervous. And she's like, mom, this guy just sprayed me with all this water. And I was all, what? <laughs> And when she started talking about it, she went to go to the restroom. It was locked. And there was a, a local that was there and he was showering in the, in the public showers that are there by the beach. Mm -hmm. And what happened was he's all, Oh, are you heading to the beach? And she thought he was being friendly. Mm -hmm. And basically they had an interaction. She thought he was being friendly and asking her. And she was like, yeah, I'm going to go get my family and stuff like that. And he's like, why do you have your phone then? You know? And he starts basically Long story short, he starts, he thinks she's a tourist and she's taking a picture of a local taking a shower. And with everything that's going on with, with racism and the island and our, our, the pandemic and, you know, just the, the mindset of everybody and the tension that we yeah. all feel on our planet right now, um, he thought, you know, she was like going to be, woo, let me post it to social media, whatever, and I judged her. And so he sprayed her with all the water and got her wet. And she thought at first he was being nice. And she was like, yeah, I'm just going to be heading over here. And, and she came back and she was really scared. So that was my, oh, hell no moment. You don't do that to my child. Right. And I walked over to confront him and I didn't know who he was. And then when he saw me, he realized that were local because mm -hmm. first of all, all I had on was my bathing suit and a little cover up. I had no shoes on, but I'm gonna find out who just did this. Right. <laughs> so that was my, Oh hell no, you don't do that to my daughter because right. first I was grateful that, because it could have been worse. Mm -hmm. Something could have worse could have happened to her. And, um, I went and talked to him and in talking to him, there was that moment when, when you asked about energy, this happens too. Cause at first I'm upset. I'm a mother. This is me defending my daughter and right. finding out, you know, why you did that and, and not to behave in such a manner. But then I became grateful for this interaction mm -hmm. because he started apologizing. He goes, I don't like who I've become and I don't like that I'm not living with Aloha. Aloha is the love that we have on the island and that, that we share and, and project out to everyone. Yeah. And so what was able to come of it was he came back with me and we went back to the car to apologize to her. And in that moment of, of what could have been really dangerous, mm -hmm. could have been a dangerous situation. Cause not only you attacked your male attacking a female. Right. Okay. And then it's, it's, you know, you're local and, and you're judging her for, you know, how she looks and all this other stuff. And there's just so many dynamics that were going on. But the healing that took place in that oh hell no moment was that he realized he shouldn't behave like that and he apologized to her. 
my daughter was able to forgive him for behaving like that. And on a side note, you know, her dad not being there in her life. Mm -hmm. So she was able to experience um, a male wronging her and then apologizing for it. So that moment took so much in and there was so much healing and beauty that took place on so many different levels that I was really grateful for it. And my daughter became grateful for it too. It brought a lot out, but it brought out old stuff to come and heal. And so these two strangers that had that interaction, had we not taken that moment to address it and to heal from it, they could have gone about their day and carried it on. And he could have still been pissed, judging her, thinking it was one thing. And she could have just been hurt and terrified. And, you know, it could have turned out really bad, but it turned out so beautiful in the pain and suffering of both of them and myself. She got to experience, you know, her mom, somebody's got your back. And somebody's standing up for you, that you're not alone. You don't have to go through this alone, you know? And him too, that look, here's two women. I shouldn't behave like that and recognize it and everything. Right. So that was my oh hell moment. And I was grateful and thankful for it. See, look at that. That was a great moment that you <laughs> try to deny us of that. <laughs> Well, it was such a pleasure having you on. I really enjoyed our conversations. Guys, before we started this interview, um, Laura did a clarity call with me. Clarity call. I don't know. I'm tongue-tied today. <laughs> <laughs> and she does these um, introductory clarity calls, you know, as like an assessment, right? For, right. you know, new clients. It was amazing, and I really think if you guys are interested in cleaning up your energy, finding, you know, getting to that purpose-driven life, that you should hit up Laura. So please <laughs> tell us where we can get in touch with you and how we can clean up our energy. <laughs> um, you can definitely go to my website. It's laurafarrell.com, and that's L-O-R-A-F-A-R-R-E-L-L.com, or One Stellar Life, and that's the number one in stellarlife.com. Schedule an appointment. I'd love to talk with you and be that champion for your soul, help you ascend to the next level, and let's move through and be greater for everyone. Absolutely. <laughs> I appreciate you, too. Thank you so much. For, for having me on your show. This has been an awesome, awesome interaction and fabulous yeah. to co-create with you in this moment right now and share with others. So Absolutely. I appreciate your thoughtful questions and bringing this about. It was awesome. Thank you. I'm glad you came on and I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> yes. <laughs>